Good afternoon. After an intense, swift, and focused investigation, Jackie Rom Little has been arrested and indicted on federal arson and civil rights charges. Mr. Little has been detained on those charges pending the trial. The charges allege that on April 24th, Little committed an arson at the Al Rahma Mosque. Count one is a federal arson charge that carries a prison term of no less than five and no more than 20 years in prison. The second count is a civil rights charge of intentionally damaging religious property because of the religious character of that property. This morning, federal and local law enforcement, as well as Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty, my, myself and people from my office met with the victims of these crimes to discuss both the charges and our work on this deeply disturbing case. The investigation of Little is continuing as we seek to learn more about his motivation and his actions on April 23rd, April 24th, and other dates. We all want to assure the Muslim com community and members of all faith communities that we respond to attacks on houses of worship at the highest levels and with utmost urgency. Immediately after these events, I assigned a senior prosecutor, Manda Sertich, who's here, to this matter. Manda brings extensive experience on both civil rights and domestic terrorism cases. She will continue to lead this case from our office. I want to thank our partners who are standing with me today from the ATF, the FBI, the Minneapolis Police, and the Hennepin County Attorney's Office for our close working relationship and for the dedication they continue to show to this, as I said, deeply disturbing matter. I also want to thank the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice as well as the National Security Division for their around-the-clock support for our work and for partnering with us. The freedom to worship is sacrosanct. We will respond to any attack on any house of worship with urgency and determination. I am proud of the support our faith community provided to the Muslim community during this difficult time. As I have said many times, Islamophobia is serious and must be confronted head on. In Minnesota, we take care of each other and we always will. Take a few questions. There's not much more we can say about the investigation. Yeah. Andy, Paul Bloom. Yep. A uh, question just it, it may be vernacular, it may not really be a law, but the hate law component versus civil rights. Sure. Could you explain, is it all in the same? Or it's all the same. Different? Yeah. It's the same thing. There are additional civil rights charges that we're looking at, but to be clear, the, the charge here, the charge of of causing damage to a house of worship is a serious charge, and it's a civil rights charge, and it's a hate crimes charge. Okay. And just quickly, I was in the hearing uh, this morning. Yep. Obviously, I mean, we knew this before, but uh, competency issues out of Anoka County. Uh, how close? What can you say about the competency issue, and how does that play out on the federal side? Of things? Sure. If it arises, it'll arise in federal court down the line, if and when it's raised by the defense. But the standards in federal court and state court are somewhat different. So more on that later if it arises, Paul. Yeah, Matt. Is there a different approach that you're going to take to this case versus the Darrell Farouk case from 2017, 2018 in, in Bloomington, given the potential uh, mental health issues of the defendant? We'll find out when we hear more about the mental health issues, if there are any, of the defendant. Uh, yes. So this guy, this person had uh, previous charges for, and I was like Representative Wilhelm Omar's office um, and the Somali officer's car. Uh, does it, in this case, like, can you say what the motive might be of him in the person case if it was motivated by Islamophobia or anti-Muslim sentiments? It's exactly what we're looking into now, and we'll hope to have more t on that once we've continued our investigation. Okay. Yes. Can you give me details about how you were able to local authorities and yourself able to bring him into custody, you know, locate and identify the suspect? Chief. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, well, first off. Um, you know, I have to make clear, um, on behalf of the people of Minneapolis, we're incredibly grateful 
uh, for all the partners, all the agencies that participated in this effort, uh, and just the urgency uh, that was brought, uh, not just from the Minneapolis police officers, but obviously from the U.S. Attorney, the FBI, the ATF, the Hennepin County Attorney's Office. We're incredibly grateful because that's the only reason why we're able to resolve this case so quickly and to bring this person to justice. Um, there was a lot of intense work going on every single day since the first fire happened. Uh, there was a lot of time I spent personally uh, in community uh, with community leaders, with imams, uh, working through this, uh, as well as our officers who were working with ATF and FBI literally around the clock tracking this person. Uh, and we were very close uh, for a couple of days. And there's just hours, dozens and dozens upon hours of, of video uh, that we recovered, our officers recovered, and we're searching through to track this person's whereabouts as well as other uh, investigative means. But ultimately what happened, uh, this person, uh, th there was a, a transport that was called for uh, where the Blue Earth County Sheriff's Office provides transports uh, in certain circumstances by contract. And uh, a dispatcher was called on Saturday night and the dispatcher was very attentive uh, and may have recognized the name and ran the person and realized who it was. Uh, and it's only because that dispatcher was so dedicated to what they were doing uh, and then the follow through uh, from the Blue, Alf Blue Earth County Sheriff from his chief deputy who literally responded to the scene himself uh, to make sure that this person was taken into custody. So I think it's a great story about how law enforcement uh, can work together collaboratively, uh, and even folks uh, 70 miles from Minneapolis are looking out for our residents and making sure that we got this person off the street. And so was, uh, Chief, was he picked up for something else? Is that what you're saying initially? Or he was picked up for this warrant. He was arrested for the warrant. Yes. Okay. Jeff, do you want to add to that? Yes, sir. Okay. Michael Krause from the FBI and Jeff Reed from ATF are with me as well. Anything else? Not much more we can say, Paul. You're going to quickly on Mary. Uh, does, I know you kind of had almost like a placeholder charge late last week. Well, does that case disappear now with this moving over to the federal court, or would you prosecute him in state court too at the same time? Yeah, we have a lawyer who's embedded in the Minneapolis Police Department and working with everybody here who drafted that uh, complaint and got the warrant so that uh, law enforcement could arrest him. So we'll just watch and see how things go in federal court, and, and um, U.S. Attorney Luger will take the lead on this. I just have another quick question about the, the charges, the hate crime civil rights charge. I recall with the uh, Darrell Farouk case, there were consecutive sentences involved because of that. Is that the case? There can be. There can be, Matt. So yeah. is this for that, the same arson charge for, that he's being charged for the uh, damage to, to property? Yes. Okay. And um, he has a history of uh, mental health illness in his background. Do you have any indications that he was having any kind of a mental health crisis or anything? Do like not. That? We're looking into all of that. Thank you. It's yeah. part of the investigation to explore if there may be other cases. Exactly. He's been doing this as well. Yes. Yes. You say you visited the, uh, the, the location, the mosque. What's the condition of the mosque right now? Is it currently closed? I have not. Chief, do you want to speak to that or do you want to? Go ahead. Uh, the masjid has been open uh, and has remained open. Uh, you know, the, in Masjid Omar, the damage was uh, very minor and limited to a bathroom stall. Uh, and in Masjid uh, Al Rama, the Mercy Center, uh, the damage is limited to um, an adjoining building on the second floor. It's not actually, um, it, it doesn't interfere with the worship space, but it does interfere with everything else that goes on out of that center. These houses of worship, you know, are, are more than just places where people pray. Uh, they're, they're centers where community gathers, they have daycare, they provide, you know, food for people. So it definitely has an impact on their ability to do all of those other functions. Yes. And, um, Sean, out of the AP, uh, how many attacks on mosques have you seen in the past year in Minnesota? We don't have a number for you right now. We can get it to you. Okay, thank you. All right. Oh, um, one more. I guess, uh, was he, um, would he have been in jail still if he wasn't bailed out for that previous arson case that he was charged in? Um, there, was a, there was a car that he burned um, a couple of years. I can't comment on that. I don't know. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you, Paul. Yeah, nice to see you.